got up here, it's freezing cold up on the mountain, but we're braving the wind and braving the cold up here to check out some bulls. Got the sun coming down on this side. What a, what a beautiful place to be. This guy, he stood out from 3,000 yards away when we started. We got about 1,500 feet of elevation that we got to gain on a hike and uh, get within that 1,000 yard shot and get a lot closer look at this guy. And easy to spot him, man. He was the dominant bull in that bunch. We're out here um, in Rogers Canyon, just outside of Laramie, Wyoming, for part of Gunworks Change Your Range initiative. Well, thanks everybody for coming out. Uh, it's gonna be an awesome day, couldn't have asked for better weather, perfect temperature, about 50 degrees and a little bit windy. What Change Your Range is, it's a two-fold initiative where we're coming out here and we're gonna host some quarterly events. And we're also trying to activate the public land shooter. As you can see behind us, there's a bunch of garbage up here in Rogers Canyon. So we're gonna to work to get it all cleaned up tomorrow, and then we're gonna do that quarterly. And then the bigger part of the initiative is getting the public land shooter incentivized to come out here and do this on his own while he's out here or she's out here every weekend. We can host as many of these events as we want. We're never gonna put a dent in the trigger trash or the public land cleanup because we'll do it one weekend here. and We got 52 weekends a year and we'll clean up 52 places out of millions of places where people go and shoot. So if we can activate that public land shooter to clean up after themselves, pick up another 10% on the way out, it's not gonna take very long at all for us to clean up and be better stewards of our public land and keep that access open for us to shoot, to go hang out, to go jeeping, whatever we wanna do. So you go out there with your buddies, clean up after you're done shooting, snap some pictures of it, and hashtag change your range and hashtag gunworks in the photos, and then you'll automatically be entered to win some, some pretty cool prizes. And then the second part of the initiative is Gunworks is launching an AR-500 rifle target product line to support the initiative. So go out there and buy your AR-500 rifle targets and change your range. Don't go shoot at trash. Buy some targets, take some steel targets out there, go shoot at some steel targets. Super easy to clean up. They don't get all sharp and blown out on the backside because they're hardened steel targets. Those proceeds from buying those targets, we're gonna donate those proceeds to help establish ranges across the country. So we're gonna go through, work with the NRA, the Congressional Sportsman's Foundation, uh, the Precision Rifle Series, and the National Rifle League, look at a map and say, there's a dark spot right here where people don't have an opportunity to go shoot, so they're going out there and shooting on public land. Let's partner with the landowner, let's get some targets out there, and let's offer uh, some opportunities for people to go shoot. Get out there, change your range, uh, let's be better stewards of our public land so that we can keep cool places like this open for you and me to go shoot at. Today I want everybody to have at least one post that's change your range. So while you're out there shooting, get on Facebook, snap a picture, and let's post. Let's get it started today. Let's get it kicked off. And you guys will be the first names in the hat uh, when we start doing giveaways next year. Okay, if that's it, thank you guys. Uh, let's get started funneling through here and let's get you taken care of. Okay. Yeah. Well, what we've got is an area that uh, people, local residents, have been using for decades for shooting, off-roading, uh, just general hanging out, and unfortunately, they leave it in an absolute state of just chaos, trash, it's just a, a dumping ground, and, and it's a real shame, it's something we've been battling for many decades. We're out here at Rogers Canyon uh, near Laramie, Wyoming for our first change of range event. And as you can see, we've got dang near 100 people out here. The coolest part about change of range is all these people are being entered to win contests right now too. So they're walking around taking pictures of them and their buddies cleaning up, entered to win contests to win free stuff from uh, Gunworks and our partners. It's gonna be a good day. I'm a senior policy advisor for Wyoming Governor Matthew H. Mead. And in that capacity, I advise the governor on natural resource issues, firearms issues, shooting sports. We have folks from the local four-wheel drive club, local shooting clubs. We have students from the university turned out in force. Um, it's just a, a really fantastic, diverse group of individuals out here you know, demonstrating you know, what we all care about. We all care about these different outdoor recreation related sports, and we all care about our great public places. We're part of the Wyoming Precision Shooting Club, uh, an RSO here at campus at UW. Yeah, we're helping kick off the campaign through the campus to get a bunch of the students out here to help. 
We're not sure if it's a couch or a recliner because it was blown to pieces with Tannerite. We kind of just thought it was going to be us. Like, no, no. This is a really good turnout and I think people are working hard. I mean, there's people going up into the canyon and <laughs> way up there. I've seen people digging out individual 22 shells out of the dirt. Uh, we're finding a lot of 22s and 9mm rounds, a couple rifle rounds. Uh, yeah, it's kind of sad how people just leave their rounds all over the place. Uh -huh. uh, basically anything you can think of. We all know that we don't have enough hands helping in these areas to make sure that we keep these areas open to shooting, that we keep them open to four-wheeling. So by doing these events, by demonstrating this kind of stewardship, what we're really doing is ensuring our capacity to go out and use these lands for the multiple uses that we prize. This awesome thing about Wyoming is it's public land you're allowed to shoot on, so a lot of people take it for granted. Where I'm from in Illinois, this is not a thing, so I love this. We need to make sure it keeps happening. So we've experienced in the past, like once these public lands get trashed so much that they actually can get shut down, that's happened to some other local areas. So we're really just trying to preserve this one, make sure that everybody can come here and have a good time. Hopefully it'll help keep people in the mindset that they need to really focus on what kind of trash they're leaving behind and what kind of legacy they need for our future. Bowling balls, there was a red one and a green one just blown to complete crap. Pieces. Found yeah. an iPhone that had been shot up. Car parts, we car got parts. like basically an entire bathroom over here someone shot up. A refrigerator, yeah. refrigerator. mattress, and a deer head. <laughs> and, and, and a deer head. <laughs> a deer head we've just got. So this is like the, the worst spot that we've found personally. <laughs> oh, we're just trying to rake it up, clean up with shovels at this point. safety officer down at the range and I know how important it is to keep these places clean and uh, looking nice and just have a nice property and land out here to come hunt and shoot. It's, it's amazing. We are picking up some public land where shooters have come and not picked up after themselves so we're just trying to kind of do our part to clean it up. They are public lands and we are the public so we are responsible for it so to change your range. It's kind of like us taking the initiative to help everybody else out. No one else is going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> and we really sincerely hope that this is going to be a wave that's going to move across the nation and we'll have see, see people everywhere doing these events and uh, taking their buddies out shooting, taking their neighbors out shooting, people that have never been, not just to clean up, but get people out to the range. Get them out and get a gun in their hands. Teach them, take them hunting. You know, these are things that we have to do if we want to take care of the future of our sport. When I drew this tag as a Wasatch Lake tag in Utah, I got pretty excited. I only had a few points and put in with three points, I think I drew that tag. It was a late season tag, limited entry bull elk tag. So when we headed up, I took Landon with me and we headed up a couple days before the hunt. And Landon obviously knew exactly where we needed to start looking for bulls. Got up here, it's freezing cold up on the mountain, but we're braving the wind and braving the cold up here to check out some bulls. I got a couple hillsides that we were looking at as the sun was coming up, saw some pretty cool bulls. We got six or eight that we're gonna go check out a little bit. Yeah, we're gonna go drive around, uh, find a couple more hillsides, a couple more little herds of bulls. They're all bachelored up, you know, after the rut, and just kind of chilling out and recovering, so get to see six or eight of them together at a time, it's pretty awesome. We saw a couple bachelor herds of bulls that late in the season. 
And this guy, uh, man, he stood out from, I think we were spotting about 3,000 yards away when we started. Just set up the spotting scope and got the phone scope out and we were watching him and uh, right away we knew, you know, that was the bull that was probably the one that we were gonna take out of this unit. So I spent this morning uh, scouting the other side of this hill, the sunny side of the hill. Went back down to the valley, did a little bit of work, came back up this afternoon. We're looking at the shady side of the hill now. But as you can see, a little bit cold on this side. Super beautiful out here. Got the sun coming down on this side. What a, what a beautiful place to be. I haven't seen any bulls yet here on this side tonight, so we're gonna go back down to a little bit lower valley. Get a little bit better look back up into these fingers that you can see cutting aside over here on this side. We'll go keep looking. So far we got that one bowl looking really good and six or seven other kind of six point bowls that aren't really quite what we're looking for, but still beautiful. Man, I can't wait to get started on Saturday. Oh, so great morning. Uh, last night we talked about that bowl that we saw yesterday and Landon and I busted down the bottom of the hill. Stayed out until dark looking around, looking for bulls, seeing if they fed up and over this hillside back to the other side. We didn't see anything last night. So uh, we came back over here to the hillside. We saw them on in the morning and they weren't here either. So we packed everything up last night, headed back down, got some sleep, got back up here early again this morning. And lucky enough, we saw the bull we were looking at yesterday. So we got a little bit closer, got some more footage of him and we watched him for a couple mornings. And he was in the same spot in the same bowl every morning. I think we were probably up about 10,000, uh, 10,500 feet, so way up in the top of the peaks up there. So he's up there with uh, eight other bulls, or seven other bulls now. There's eight bulls up on the mountain. He's definitely the biggest out of the herd, man. He's got a really big wide frame, and he looks really good. I hate to throw a number at him, but we're hoping for that 350-ish size bull up there. We're being real careful to try to not draw attention to any other hunters and show them where we're looking up there pretty bright this morning. Those bulls are showing up pretty bright on the hillside, so kind of keeping our heads pointed this way when cars drive by and then look up that way when uh, when we know that we're clear. The hunt starts tomorrow morning, so we're gonna be up here at four in the morning. We got about 1,500 feet of elevation that we gotta gain on a hike and yeah. get up and above and over this ridge and hopefully uh, get within that thousand yard shot and get a lot closer look at this guy and see if he's the guy that we wanna take. Beautiful morning, beautiful country wouldn't rather be anywhere else. So it's gonna be a good time, good hunt. Uh, we're out here, it's Saturday, it's the morning of the hunt. I got out here really early, we're a couple hours before first light, but we got a heck of a hill that we gotta climb and get up, up and over. Um, we're gonna go ahead and go after that bull that Landon and I have been seeing the last couple days. So he's looking pretty good and uh, we'll get up there and see if we can see him a little bit closer. It'll be the closest view we've had of him so far, but. Uh, we'll get out here. It's pretty freezing cold, but I know we're going to get hot as soon as we start moving. So we'll start moving and start getting warmed up. Well, we probably gained about 2,000 feet of elevation up and over this hill down to the bowl to where we could make a shot. We were planning on making a shot across this bowl thinking it was going to be about 800 yards to the elk from where we were going to make it over the top of the mountain. So. We got up there in the morning. I brought a couple other guys with us because we knew it was going to be a heck of a hike back out with that, that big bull if we were able to take him. Well, we started way early. I think we started hiking about 4.30 in the morning, but a couple hours in, we are where we wanted to be when the sun came up. Spent all morning getting up here. Man, what a freaking hike getting up and over this hill. Every morning we'd come up for the last few days and they'd be just down here in the bottom of this bowl uh, pretty consistently. And this morning we come hiking up here and there's a hiker ahead of us. Look, right? So guy shows up a uh, half hour before us probably and got up on the hill before us, but we get up here uh, hiking along these terraces that you can see behind me. Expecting to get up here and see him, but it's hunting, you know? You get up here and nothing's up here on top of the hill. We're suspecting maybe they over through the night fed up and over this hillside. So we're gonna walk these terraces behind us 
and see if we can get up and over the other side of this hill and see if they're just down over the other other side of this ridge but man it's freaking beautiful up here we're on top of the world and views for days so still wouldn't spend my morning anywhere else let's go have a good time and see if we can find that sucker the nature part of it i mean it sounds a little cliche but getting up there i wanted to put in in this hunt i wanted it to be a hard hunt and i wanted to pack the animal out i wanted to have the experience being my first elk hunt of getting back in some higher some higher deeper country and packing it out just to be a part of you know be a part of nature and and be in nature and with the wildlife. Sun came up and we're glassing. We had five guys up there trying to find this bowl and, and he wasn't there. He wasn't in this little area that we, we thought that he was gonna be at that we'd seen him the previous two days. We started hiking around, looking for them. We knew that they were gonna be somewhere up in those high peaks. We walked around the bowl, probably put another couple miles in, right on the edge of this uh, little ridge, and looking down into a couple other valleys as we were making our way uh, down across that mountain ridge. And then, uh, sure enough, he was down there on the other side of the ridge, down in the bottom. Him and six other bulls were down there, and easy to spot him, man. He was the, you know, he was the dominant bull in that bunch. Really old, really big, really wide, heavy bull. We had five guys up there trying to find this bowl and, and he wasn't there. We walked around the bowl, probably put another couple miles in. Uh, sure enough, he was down there on the other side of the ridge down in the bottom. Man, we were down hanging off the edge, trying to build a shooting position up on top of these rocks and trying to make it kind of quick before they moved out of area that we could take a shot. Take him. Dead elk, dude. We got the bull, got him down, and then, then the fun started. Uh, 398. 398. Yeah, just right under 400 yards, but crazy angle. It's 30 degrees freaking straight down. If I let go of my gun, that thing would have fell down the hill. We've been watching these bulls for the last two days. Um, had them pretty well patterned. Uh, got in here this morning, thought we were right on them. They were no to be, nowhere to be found. Um, we've done this hunt the last five years. Killed a few bulls right here. Um, knew pretty much right where they'd be if they weren't in the spot we'd been seeing the last two days. Poked our head over the hill right there below us. Jim smoked him. It's done yeah. Done that quick and easy, almost easy, almost too easy. <laughs> Get this little bit of a shake going after you shoot a big bull, so uh, it's going to be a heck of an afternoon getting this sucker out of here. We got some good adrenaline. We're going to need it. We got a good pack out. We're up over 9,000 feet up here, probably 9,500 feet. Pretty high for a late season elk hunt, but it looks like this is a better pack out anyway. Like that's Oh yeah. yeah. It'll, it'll suck getting it up to here, but it's freaking we're gonna bring it up to here. Or we're gonna take it out that way. We are oh, this sure is, as hell not this taking is the it up canyon the bottom. Yeah, that you can't drive to. <laughs> we will die. We got down there, uh, hiked down that really steep uh, face that we shot him down. up and quartered up and in our packs and then we started that trek back up those 2,000 feet back up and down and up and down oh, 
we finally made it up here on top. Uh, according to some of our GPS watches and stuff, we put four and a half miles in so far today. Heck of a hike. Uh, I keep talking about the country, but you can see behind me, we're in the high country. Took a little altitude reading where we killed the bull, was at 9,800 feet. So pretty dang high up here, which also makes it hard to hike. Up on the ridge, looks like we're downhill from here. We're taking turns trading pack off. So you can see Landon in the background, packing that bull's head up. That's the heaviest pack. It was everything that I could have dreamed of. So we put in the time, we found the right bowl. We were prepared that morning before we went in and knew, you know, we had a game plan of where we were gonna be. Of course, you know, things happen and things change. So uh, we pivoted and changed our plan a little bit and kept looking for him. Uh, got back on the bowl that we wanted. And then we had all the, all the hiking and packing that you could want to go get that thing and get him out. So it was a great hunt. It went every bit as good as I expected.